Okay, welcome back to Fast Ship Performance then. My name is Tim Davies and today I'm gonna to talk to you not about truth bombs. I'm gonna to talk to you about the setup that I use for my Shadowlands DCS flight school. This whole rig here probably cost about 5,000 pounds. I was using a computer before I upgraded to this monster machine that was running a 1080 Ti with 32 gigabytes of uh, RAM on an 8700K uh, CPU clocked at about five gigahertz and that was more than enough. Now you can go down from there even. We can look at the, we can look on the website in a minute on DCS and see what min spec you kind of need. But because I'm running, what, five monitors, I'm also running a laptop, you probably can't see, it's just over, just over there. Uh, I don't always have that on, but that's what I sync. So when I go away, I can still teach them anywhere in the world. What I tend to uh, have to do is have a quite a big machine. Now I use Warthog products. So I use the Warthog stick and throttle. People use all sorts of stuff, guys. Verpal, if you're interested, speak to me, I can advise. And in my actual uh, Discord channel, we have a Discord over here that we use. A lot of people uh, in the tech chat will be able to advise on exactly what you need. If you ask me a question, I'll put it in there, give you the answer. That's how it works out. A lot of people trade inside Discord as well, uh, inside my flight school. So they say, hey, I've got a cheap warthog going for you. Do you want, you know, just trade it, sell it, do all that kind of stuff. Currently the machine I'm using now, I bought from a company called Palicomp up in Crew. They're um, a custom PC builder. It costs about, um, I think the base system was about 2200 plus the graphics card, which came down about 1200 in the end. So you can see the system itself is quite costly. Monitors, everything else. The I've got Noble Chairs and they donated the chair. Thank you, Noble Chairs. Big shout out, they were brilliant. Um, I've got a jet pad thing that buzzes. That was awesome as well. Um, and I've got MFG V3 crosswind pedals down there, which I love, all right? so. I haven't had stuff for free, guys. I, I intend to, I buy stuff because I believe that if people are making products, um, you should buy it. Noble Chairs, saw a YouTube video, donated the chair for me, happy. Um, that was brilliant. And I did a video about that as well, all right? Um, because I, I believed in helping them out. And, right, so I use DCS. I do work with Eagle Dynamics a little bit to help them out refine their product. A lot of the big YouTubers out there, Growling Sidewinder, Cap from Grim Reapers, people like that, they also help out the uh, the game developer, Eagle Dynamics, the business developer is a backseat GR guy anyway, so you know I know him, I've flown with him loads. So I use Combat Flight here, um, Viper uh, Combat Flight, I advise him as well. I think we put some bullseyes on here, I believe, on Combat Flight. I said, hey, any way you can make some bullseyes? And he was like, yeah, I'll do it for you, mate. So we put some bullseyes, put some range rings, everything else. I do some planning on Combat Flight for the missions. It works out really well for me. DCS itself, obviously we run uh, DCS Open Beta 2.7. That works for us. You need the F5, F18, and Nevada. And the reason you need Nevada, guys, is very soon the whole school is gonna be in Nevada for both the Primo and the Extremist courses. What is Primo? Primo is the advance. That is what happens on, say, 25 Squadron in the Royal Air Force now. It used to be A flight on four Squadron. It's the stalling, spinning, general handling. It's the formation work, the navigation, everything non-weaponsy. Then we take you, and that's done on the F5. F5 built on F18. In the next iteration, it's going to be all on F5. Deep dive into that aircraft, it's a great airplane. Then on the Extremis, we go into the weapons event. So we talk simulated attack profiles, we talk low level evasion, composite sorties. The Air Force is doing things a little bit differently now. Um, I think the traditional stuff that happened on 208 Squadron 19 and 4 on B Flight when I was commanding that really uh, is, is the foundational elements of which we can grow by doing this. Now, I am bringing in things like pod work. We are using Harrier F-16. Some guys are flying F-14, but all the extremists will be on the F-18 and the F-18C only. So, Jackal, I've got to pop up uh, Threat Marshals out to the west. There's 270-53-15,000. Turns hot through south. And Wolf hook. Moshi, yeah, point them now, please. Point six, Moshi, if you can, and just give them 10 degrees. We will not have any other aircraft flying in the school apart from F5 and F18. Now that's within the school, guys, within the school, all right? That means during the lesson times, that's the kind of aircraft you're gonna be flying, all right? And we're gonna deep dive into them, you're gonna get really good at them. Then outside of the lesson times, i.e. every single time that there's not a lesson on, which is the majority of the time at 90%, you can fly what you want. What you can't do on the servers is clown about. We're not about that, guys. We're about sitting in your jet, starting it up, doing things professional, getting out there, all right? I'm not regimented when it comes to like COM and ATC procedures, because we can learn those. That is in here, we do talk about that. But what we, what I am hard over, guys, is, is not being a dick, all right? Not shooting people down unless you've agreed to go out and have a fight. 
uh, the school server, which will be in Nevada, there'll be nothing that shoots back at you. So you can go out there, you can do close air support, you know, work with JTACs, anything else you want, go to the range, heavy weapons range, we've got an academics weapon range there as well. Um, we've got, as I said, CAS targets all over the place. Um, you've got some air combat areas, you've got some general handling areas, all based out of Nevada. And then the other server, which currently is the Primo server based out of the Caucasus, we're still gonna have some boat work going on on that server and everything else, because of course we do take the F-18 to the boat. That's included in the Primo at the moment. So we do a lot of maritime ops with the F-18. As I said, we are growing into other aircraft now. Uh, we are using uh, a lot more of the Harrier, which is a good aircraft uh, to understand sort of British engineering and software development, things like that. I like that a lot. And of course, F-16, which is which is they're doing really well, doing a lot of work for F-16 in the uh, in Eagle Dynamics in DCS itself. Standard mouse, guys, um, USB hubs up the yin yang. I'm a big fan of labeling all my devices. I, you know, I'm just that guy, you know. I need to know when things go wrong, how to, what is this? What am I looking at here, okay? Tack view we use up here, mainly for um, briefing and for debriefing as well. So we always have something on tack view going on. Um, that's always being streamed. The lessons are always streamed live. A lot of the guys will just drop in for the lesson and say, I'm just here for the brief, Tim. They'll be on their phones at work. The phone's prodded up next to the desk and they've just got an earpiece in listening to the brief I give. The briefs are 20, 30 minutes long. Lessons last about an hour, of, well, 40 minutes to an hour of flight time. Most of them, I would say. And then maybe a, a bit of a wash up, five, 10, 10 minutes wash up, not much more than that, okay? The school's busy, I'm not gonna lie. There's quite a few people, but not enough that I can't pay attention to them. So the, the more, well, the most I've ever had in a lesson, guys, I would say would probably be about, I'll keep this short, probably about 40 in a lesson. Uh, I've got 20 studs, I'll put you all on those, all on different frequencies, you're absolutely fine. I can do, I can do that, but I did, well, what tends to happen, ideally, what, the amount of number that comes in is 10 to 15 in a lesson. And that's generally what I'm getting at the moment. Some lessons, if I've got less than four, it's hard for me really to, you know, I'm giving a lot of time for only four people. So I tend to then maybe collapse that lesson down or get rid of it and, and boost up into another area, okay? So we do teach on uh, in BST in on uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday at the moment in the evenings, uh, Wednesday morning also, Friday morning also, eight till 10, and Thursday around about two o'clock there's a session. Uh, that captures a lot of guys out in the, uh, where, who do you guys in Hong Kong? I think we've got a few pilots out there. We do have airline pilots that come and see how the military flying uh, works, and we also have uh, military students from many air forces. But I don't tend to train them when they're on an active flying course. Uh, they're just getting, you know, an idea. Um, so, what can you use and how can you get involved? Well, you can join up either as Experientia through Patreon. That gives you full access to the, ser um, the servers. Gives you the Friday night and the Sunday night session as well. Friday night, party night, Sunday night, uh, Sunday session. There's always a session going on, on on Sunday. But it doesn't give you access to the lessons and the teaching. We need you to take it a bit more seriously. We need you to get into studying jets if you want to be doing that. And that means you need to go into the Discipulus. Discipulus is where you'll find the training for the Primo and the Extremist and the syllabuses that, are, that I've written, the syllabuses that I deliver. There's about nine months worth of training <laughs> it's a lot um, and you haven't got to turn up to any of it if you don't want to you know but you do get access to that material uh, you can read your way through it I'll take you through it and the, the main thing about the server is it's a it's a great place or the school sorry it's a great place for like-minded individuals to come together and to talk about things currently we're in a formation phase you must do primo before you come onto extremists you can go around them as many times as you want I don't care it's absolutely fine and uh, guys use all kinds of different kit. Most guys fly on VR. I tend to use track IR up here, guys. It's pretty cool. And uh, most guys are on VR. I'm obviously monitoring them here. If I do fly them on a Friday or a Sunday, then I tend to use the, the Reverb G2 here. The computer I've got is a 12700K uh, chip. Um, it's, uh, what is it, what else? It's got a 3080 Ti in there, um, an Asus card, which is pretty epic. It's water cooled. It's 64 gigabytes of RAM, so all that kind of big stuff in there, you know what I mean? Um, so it's pretty cool like that, so I can run that. And we run OpenXR for the G2s, because then we take it outside of Steam VR, which takes uh, a lot of resource, unfortunately. If you want to know how to do that, you want to learn that, then you come and speak to me. If you're doing the Discipulus course, then, you know, I'm a flexible cat. You know, if you come to me and you're like, Tim, I'm just here to, to have fun and to go and fly with some guys in the same piece of sky, this is the place to come. If you're like, Tim, I really want to learn about this kind of stuff. I'm really interested in it. It's, uh, I, I really want to learn about how you delivered flying training in the Royal Air Force. I'm your guy there as well, okay? So we cater for all those, all those, all those people that have an interest in aviation. It's great also, we're doing formation. One of the things I say to people 
you only have to learn formation once. It's quite sad, it's like riding a bike. You'll get rusty at it, but once you know the principles of it, you can always come back and you can do it. So we do a full two weeks of formation, pairs, departures and recoveries we're doing today. We've done the close formation work last week. So they're kind of mid course on Primo at the moment, to tell you the truth. Um, and they're getting very good at it. Formation in the F5, people generally hate initially because they don't know how to fly the F5 properly. They haven't sorted the curves out on the pitch and roll axis or on the throttles. Uh, once I sort that out for them, the aircraft just, just chills out. Think of it like a horse, it just calms itself right down. And then we, we talk about how we trim, power actuary trim equals performance. We get them involved in that and they start enjoying it a lot more. If you can fly formation in the F5, guys, you can fly formation in anything. They get solid at the end of it. They start doing uh, formation work in poor weather. Um, they get really good at it, in fact, uh, and it's a shame because, they, as I said, they only learn it once. But also, one of the things I do say to them is you, you have to allow yourself to be flying in formation and give yourself a break. You, you run out of tracking juice after about 20 minutes. You need to swap over the leads and everything else. And also, you can't just keep doing formation forever. You need to go to bed at some point, allow the associative conditioning, the default mode network in the brain to reorder everything you've been doing so that your hands know what your brain is sending it and you will get better. So you need breaks. And also, when you are flying with someone, talk about things like, what do they do for a job? You know, um, what does the wife do? Have they got any kids? All that kind of stuff. Where are you going on holiday this year? Because if you just talk about formation the whole time, you're doing this, you're getting a bit freaky. If you um, break it up and talk about something completely different, then the, the brain just says, oh, I can chill, I can relax, I can spread the toes, I can lift the baby finger off the, off the stick and stop death gripping it, and you get a lot better. So all these things come out, guys, in the school. If you are interested in it, as I said, go to Patreon. I'll put the details of the computer up on the screen. I've probably done that already. Um, and uh, come and join the team if you're interested. Yeah, also in the comments, I would just say this, guys, in the comments, you know, let me know what computers you're using if you are flying DCS. Um, let me I'll try and get a min spec here as well. You know, what can we run a VR headset on? What is it? And I used to use the other machine over here, the one with the 1080 Ti, which is a great card, by the way. And I think it really is a great card. You can pick one of those up. I was running a Rift on that, then I changed to, as a CD1, I changed to a Rift S. That was good. The Rift S with a 1080 Ti was good. Windows 11 seems to have an issue with some Oculus products. Uh, some of my pilots are still flying Oculus with Windows 11. We're not too sure, mine it wouldn't work, nothing I could do about it, it was an absolute nightmare, so I had to upgrade to Reverb G2. It just pushed the cost of everything just oh, through the roof. So yeah, let's work out, You know, what can we actually get a system for that's gonna run DCS, you know, min spec, min spec DCS. I'll put the DCS specs up on the screen as well, guys, uh, so you can have a look at those. But uh, if you do want to come in, by all means, a quick, what, 15 minute video then, 15 minute video, guys, into the Shadowlands um, uh, school. Uh, as I said, I did spend 10 years in the military, in the Royal Air Force, teaching this on 208 Squadron. I taught advanced flying training and then I taught TAC weapons on four, so Hawk T1, Hawk T2. And I base my content on those kind of lessons. All right, so we, we, we start from the beginning, we start from general handling, instrument flying, formation, nav. It gets more, more complicated with planning and everything else. And then we go into the BFM, the low level work, the pairs work at low level, um, and we go into the air combat and the, the radar work on the F-18 as well. So if that's of interest to you, then by all means, come into the school. It's a great place. You'll meet some interesting people as well, some absolutely crazy cats. Most of them are airline pilots, to be fair. But uh, yeah, jump in, jump into Patreon. Uh, give me a call, email tim at fastjetperformance.com if you want, or drop us something in the comments and I'll read it and I'll, I'll send you an answer like that. But yeah, hit the comments, tell me what, you know, ask some questions, that kind of stuff, guys. I really appreciate the support you give to the channel as well. Uh, you know I'm hitting the Air Force a little bit at the moment. It's nothing personal. I, you know, I know Chief Air Staff. I just think that the West is being um, subverted a little bit and we, we talk about a few of those things. I do believe that we have to hold hold firm with our traditional values, guys, traditional values. And that's one of the things in the school here we do is we, it's an education, it's a place for uh, reflection and to get together with like-minded people, uh, chill out, get some flying done, get some learning done. And um, hopefully, you know, let me know what you think of it and, uh, and I'll get back to you. I really appreciate your time anyway. I genuinely mean that. There's a lot of things to watch on YouTube and you, you, you've watched this video and that means a lot to me. So thank you for that, guys. Uh, hopefully talk soon then. Tim Davies, Fast Hit Performance. <laughs>